The technical updates promised for Enhanced Gears 5 on Series X include a PC Ultra Visual Feature Set, PC Ultra HD Textures, 4K 60 frames per second, including during cinematics on the Series X, 120 frames per second in Versus Multiplayer, and a plethora of other visual improvements. I'm left wondering what's more impressive, the fact that they succeeded on each of these promises, or the fact that it sets an impressive standard for what we can expect from the Series X in the future. This is our performance analysis of Gears 5 on the Xbox Series X. Welcome back, kids. The Xbox Series X offers a wide array of options for those seeking more choices in the performance versus visual quality toolkit of your console. And one of the games that comes enhanced on day one, putting this new hardware to the test, is the Collision's Gears 5. And they've succeeded in creating something truly remarkable, achieving 4K at 60 FPS throughout the entire campaign with a visual quality that matches the PC version of the game at ultra settings. To achieve 4K 60 frames per second, they're actually scaling every four frames with resolutions hitting 1440p, 1700p, and true 4K. They also use variable rate shading, which takes part of the picture and only renders what the player needs to be seeing at full resolution. This saves a tremendous amount of processing power, especially in a scene where you already use a technique like depth of field. This was the tech they credited with being able to hit true 4K 60 FPS at moments. Here's Chris Wallace, the senior rendering engineer at The Coalition, with more on how VRS helped them optimize the game. It's a technique that lets us sort of specify certain regions in the screen and, and reduce the resolution. You think about dynamic resolution, dynamic resolution is, is great because you kind of scale your content, but it's, it's global, right? So your, your, your whole screen is either, you know, at full 4K or it's, you know, at Ruse 90% or something. Um, but sometimes that doesn't make sense. So like in the cinematics, like, you know, you'll have like a close up on a character face, right? And then you'll have the background and the background's all blurred out due to depth of field. And you really like 4K is great, but on the background, it doesn't really make sense, right? Like you want all your resolution on the face. And so VRS is sort of this, this really cool new hardware in uh, Xbox Series X and S that lets us kind of target that resolution. In general, like in, in the cinematics, we always have depth of field. That in general, we solve around a 10% dynamic res boost. So that was, that was really great. Um, and in, in some cinematics, it actually makes the difference between you know 90% dynamic res to running at full 4K. With cutscenes rendered in real time using the Unreal Engine, they achieve 4K 60 frames per second during these in-engine moments like this sequence, which they admitted was incredibly taxing to develop during their 2019 GDC presentation. <laughs> While well, moments like this were at 30 FPS on Xbox One X and prior Xbox models, we now experience all of these with a shocking level of detail at 60 frames. The only platform that struggled to keep up was the original Xbox One, but even then, it comes incredibly close to keeping up with the targeted 30 frames per second, no doubt relying on the engine's temporal upscaling and using it to their advantage. Temporal upscaling allows it to change the resolution on all platforms so that it can keep that 60 frames per second and occasionally upscale from a resolution like 1440p. So with upscaling, fast forward a few console generations and the Xbox Series X handles all of this at 4K60 with ease, adjusting as needed in the background. One thing I wanna point out are those brief spikes in frame time. Here's what the collision's Colin Penty had to say about that. It's basically, yeah, it's a double frame on camera cuts in cinematics. We basically hard-coded it to be a, a single 33 milliseconds kind of cut between camera cuts on Xbox One X and Xbox One. We didn't really notice on Series X as a result of the 60 frames per second that we still had the, this hard-coded 33 millisecond cut. Why do we have this sort of hard-coded cut? The reason we did this is you might see it in other Unreal games where if you don't do this, 
you'll sometimes see characters kind of warping in or kind of doing weird things at between cuts. And so we worked, we did, I had this clever workaround on Gears 5 where we did this 33 millisecond cut to always ensure everyone was in place and everything was going great uh, when the camera was cut. But as a result of the 60 frames per second, it results in a double frame. And we just never, through all of our testing, noticed this issue. But we have a fix just again yesterday. Um, we have a fix now that we are working on for this that we are very confident will work. And so again, it's no limitation of the Series X. It's just sort of a oversight part um, that we are resolved right away. Even more surprising is the push to 120 frames per second in Versus. There currently isn't a device that can capture at 4K 120, so here's a look at our 1080p 120 frames per second on compressed capture, and the results are still surprising. On the left, you see 120 frames per second slowed down to 10% on the Xbox Series X, and on the right, you see the Series X at 4K 60 frames per second. The fact that an engine with this level of detail can achieve anything near to a locked 120 20 frames per second is nothing short of astounding. And in my mind, that means we're in for some pretty incredible experiences in the years to come on the Series X. If the initiative or any other companies aligning with the Xbox platform take advantage of the tools and methodology showcased by the Collision to achieve this feat, we're all in for something special. The additional frame rate isn't just for show. This also drastically reduces the input latency you'll experience with Gears 5, putting it down 57% in multiplayer versus over the Xbox One X, according to the Collision. To give you some context, I recently did some latency analysis of Call of Duty Warzone on the PC, and this puts Gears 5 on the Series X in the same range as Warzone with optimized PC settings at 1080p on a 360 hertz monitor. That's no small feat for the console. The one area the game did have a noticeable dip below 60 frames per second was in the open space sections with the skiff. You can see the spikes to 33 millisecond frame time during these portions, causing a dip to around 58 frames per second on Series X. The effect is even more drastic on the Xbox One X as the game would dip below 60 frames per second and struggle to get back to that locked frame rate. Comparatively, the Xbox Series X handles these stutters with ease. Here's what the Collision had to say about these. The one where you're in the overworlds on the skiff and you're seeing those slight dips to like 59, 58 frames per second, that's not because the CPU or the GPU is, is overwhelmed. It's, it's basically because we are streaming at those times and we've done a lot to try to reduce latency on Series X. There was a little bit of a, a side effect with the way uh, streaming hits the CPU for just a frame or two there. And so that basically causes just a slight blip. Um, and it's mainly visible in the overworlds when you're in the skiff because you're traveling so quickly, it's streaming a lot. So when you're in the linear missions, it's quite hard to see that issue. But in the overworlds, because you're going so quickly on the skiff, that's when you get these slight hitches. So we are working on a fix right now. Just had a meeting with the guys yesterday. We're feeling really confident about it. So let's just talk about the overall visual fidelity. They're targeting PC at Ultra. So before I spoil it for you, can you tell me which of these is the PC at Ultra settings? And while you're looking at that, remember all these cutscenes were created in engine to remove loading screens to create a seamless experience. So all this is rendered in real time on each platform. Well, if you said the one on the right, you were correct. But let's try another. How about this next scene with Dell? Well, this time I swapped them so PC is on the left. Okay, now let's dive in a bit and point out a few areas where the Series X is flexing on this one. We already have the new shading model in effect from the Collision here, but the armor is where the Xbox Series X is looking almost a tad better than the PC at Ultra settings. And here it is again next to the PC with the Ultra HD Texture Pack. The fact that the PC running this is a 3700X AMD CPU with an NVIDIA 3090 gives it the edge, but a console at a fraction of the cost of just those two components in my build, achieving visuals at this level blows me away. Come on, time to hook in for the drop. Again in this early scene, the draw distance for things like foliage is also improved. In the very first mission, when you immediately enter the repelling section, you can see on the Xbox One X, the vegetation below hasn't even rendered into the scene yet, versus the Series X, where the entire area is covered with vegetation. 
This clearly reveals one of the first sacrifices that you can clearly identify on the previous generation of hardware and how the Series X has been used to take things to a new level. If you look at the same scene on an original Xbox One, then go to the X, you get some draw distance back because of the higher resolution. Now looking at the Series X, the scene dramatically transforms versus the One X, not only because of the plants, but also the screen space global illumination giving the entire scene a more realistic lighting. On that note, the final two items they discussed were contact shadows and screen space global illumination, two additional subtle touches that add that extra layer of polish. Contact shadows are seen when a light source hits, say, a piece of wood or books, and previously that would fail to cast anything. On the Series X, each item that would have a piece of 3D geometry pops out of the environment and has a much more realistic look in the world. The most impressive tech is likely the screen space global illumination, which works in conjunction with methods like contact shadows to create additional lighting elements that look more natural. Objects within a player's view will be lit dynamically as opposed to with a static preset methodology in the engine. It does a tremendous amount to further sell each scene. And of course, there was one more enhancement I can't forget about. Dave Batista. It's Foz, right? <clears throat> yeah, yes, sir. Shut the f up, Foz. I love you, Batista, but for that line, I've got to give the edge to DiMaggio. In all seriousness, Gears 5 sets an impressive standard for visual quality, use of the Unreal Engine tech, and it's all locked behind ultra settings at 60 frames per second. If this is what the Series X can do on launch day, I can't wait to see what's in store as more is released from Microsoft Studios. This is my first performance analysis video for IGN and I hope that you liked it. I've heard you loud and clear about wanting to see better comparisons and capture on IGN, so I've spent a lot of time developing this process. It's not easy and of course on a personal note, Digital Foundry is just a big inspiration for me to be better at this. They've set the standard that I'll keep trying to meet and improve upon with these pieces. But what did you think about this new feature on IGN? I want to know, so tell me in the comments below. This was a week of my life and I learned so much, so I have to honestly just thank you for watching. And thank you to The Coalition for the additional context. Stay tuned for our next performance analysis all about your friendly neighborhood, you know who. It's Foz, right? <clears throat> yeah, yes, sir. Shut the f up, Foz. Yep, yeah, sir.